What's good Deluxe family? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video right here, we have a guy that actually experienced hell. We're going to listen to his testimony, but the most interesting thing that I find out when you hear different stories about heaven and hell was, for example, like I had a really, really close friend. She experienced a lot of the supernatural. Okay, now one night she actually had a dream of a depiction of hell. And the way it was depicted, she was in a movie theater watching on a big screen. And one of the images that really stood out, she, she gave me a list of all these different images, everything that was going on. And one of them, she was like, um, there were like ladies and guys that were having spears stuck up their, their private part. Like just constantly stuck up like that. It sounds insane and crazy, but that's what she saw in the dream. And then at the same time, it was almost being comedic. It was Marvel. I think it was like Captain America making people laugh. So it was showing them hell, but also making people laugh at the same time. It's crazy. So I ended up looking up like hell depiction and that exact depiction that she gave from her dream was actually depicted in one of the Google images. It's like, yo, that's crazy because she didn't look at that Google image before she saw it in her dream. But it was literally spears being stuck up that part of the body constantly. So it's like, yo, if that's a line like that and then other people are actually like having similar testimonies that align like that it's, it's just interesting at the end of the day we all have the right to believe whatever we want to that's all right you feel what i'm saying so i heard this guy's health testimony and he claimed that he saw jesus i saw a snippet of this testimony on tiktok i just passed by a really really quick it's probably like a 30 second one minute clip but when i heard this man say he saw jesus i had to hit him up so what i did i texted him on instagram this was january 30th I said, I see you say you saw Jesus. What did he look like? I got to know what Jesus looked like. If you saw Jesus, tell me what he looked like. But this, is, this was his response. Hello, Noah, of course. Of course, you know, I have hundreds of thousands of requests for things like this, but I haven't been answering them because the media has distorted everything I've said. I'm not going to tell you what he looked like to me, but I will tell you that he was not blonde hair or blue eyes. What I can tell you is that if you encounter him, it will be the most love you've ever experienced. And when he looks at you, you know that he knows everything about you, but still loves you. Hope this helps. And also, if I were you, I would look at this as a sign of how much God loves you because I actually responded. Blessings. So he never gave an exact depiction of Jesus. I don't know if the reason behind it is because it was more of like a spiritual encounter and he couldn't really give an exact image of him. Or he just didn't feel like sharing. I don't know. We're going to leave that on him. But I feel like I should just include this in the video. Because I actually did reach out to him. I'm like, yo, gee, what did he look like? But without further ado, let's get straight into this. His hell encounter testimony. Let's see what's going on. Oh, yes. Uh, absolutely. I saw the real hell. I was there. And I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I don't care what a person has done to me. I would never wish that on them. Um... But for me, the way it went is that I thought that I was having a heart attack, and uh, I physically, my my spirit left my physical body, and I thought that I was going upward, but because uh, I had, thought I had done so much good in this lifetime and helped so many people and made so many decisions that were godly decisions, but um, as opposed to me going up, I went down, and I went literally into literally into the center of the earth, and that that's where hell is. Jesus even said that in the scriptures. He says. Uh, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a well, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, uh, which is where, where hell is. Um, the things that I saw were literally undescribable. It just brings me, makes me emotional every time I talk about it. But uh, it was. Uh, one can, of the, can anyone fact check that in the comment section? Is that scripturally? Is that where hell really is? One of the things that I saw that just blew me away was there's a man on, on all fours like a dog. He was burned from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet and his eyes were bulging out. And what was worse than that is that he had a chain around his neck. So he was like a dog in hell. And what was even worse than that is that who was holding the chain. It was a demon holding the chain. And I knew because their things are not, they're not said, they're known. You just, it's like a telepathic communication. Um, I knew that this demon was sent in this man's life to ride him from his childhood until the time that he died because the demon knew that if I could stay in his life long enough on the earth, if I can keep getting him to not serve God and to make bad decisions on the earth, 
and I'll have power over him in hell, and he'll be a slave to me. So it's like twice a slave. It's like you're a slave on the earth to the things of the devil, and then in hell you're you're really like a tormented dog slave. Sheesh. Uh, so and you know, and, and that, that's just a prime example of why it's very important just to heal. Because we, all of us, we do have traumas that we probably haven't healed from. It could be a trauma from last year. It could be even a trauma from 10 years ago. But really attacking that trauma with no fear, overcoming it so you can move more in peace and love is very important. And another part that I experienced that just blew me away. I just, I'm, it still baffles me to this day. And there was a section in hell where music was playing. And it was the same music that we hear on the earth. But as opposed to uh, entertainers singing it, uh, the music demons were singing it. And it was some of the same lyrics that we hear here. Um, and then again, things, like I said, they, they're not, things are not telepathically, they're te things are telepathically known there. I knew that on earth, a lot of the lyrics and the music and the songs are inspired by demons. Wow. So sometimes when people smoke to get high and, and to, to get lyrics and to get verses and, and rappers and all those things. So in a lot of music, people actually uh, smoke to get high, to get verses and to get bars and be hot and to be fresh and uh, to get that, that swag. But when they open themselves up uh, to a false high, it's like illegal access into the spirit realm. They actually come in contact with demons who give them lyrics for the purpose of controlling people on the earth. So uh, there... See here, music is first like to get over a breakup. Don't worry, be happy. I bust the windows out your car or uh, I, under my umbrella or whatever. Uh, there, every lyric to every song is to torment you as to the fact that you didn't worship God through music when you were on the earth. So it's like, you know, you had a chance to worship him in church and worship him at home and worship him through music, but you chose to uh, worship Satan by repeating the lyrics that he inspired to come into the earth. Now so, I, I want I want you guys there. I want you guys to keep in mind, you know this is he's his own human being, his own spirit, his own soul with his own experiences. You guys literally do not have to take everything he's saying as fact. You guys can just we can just listen to it with an open mind and an open ear. But this kind of aligns with what I was saying in one of my previous videos on how everything that happens here physically comes from the spiritual dimension first. Like I was explaining, like everything that was created around us, it was thought within the mind first on a spiritual realm. And then what do we do? We created it with our physical hands from this from this bed. But especially when it comes to music, because this is this is this is when vibrations come into play in words like words are very, very, very powerful. And this is what I was telling you guys before. So it kind of aligns with what I was saying for that, because music is very controlling and um uh, I was so, I was angry with, with God because it's like, how, how did I do this much good? And, and I'm actually, um, I'm actually in Angry with God. Well, um, I lifted up out of hell and I came back on the earth and God began to speak to me. I actually saw the real Jesus. I saw him and he began to speak to me and he said that, he said, you have been secretly upset with the people that hurt you. Um, you have been hoping that I would punish the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. He says, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I'm giving you because I want to do something through you that the world hasn't seen. Uh, and so the root of it is that although I did good, I gave a lot to people. I, I, I did a whole lot of good things. The thing that I had in my heart was unforgiveness towards people who had did me wrong. Because a person that can't forgive is a person that's forgotten how much they have been forgiven of. So uh, that's my experience with hell. Hell is a real place, and I don't believe that God, God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. And whatever's still left inside of you that God has been trying to get out of you that you, you die with, that's going to determine where you go. God's going to want to know, did you learn to love well? Did you learn to forgive well? Did you serve me well? Did you do something greater than your life? Did you do anything that has eternal significance, or is everything selfish? So... I thank God for the light who is Jesus because because of that light I won't see any more days in hell. Well yeah, so I feel like well I know that our actions and how we are it, det it determines how our mind state is really gonna be here. And just knowing that it's kinda like 
some people are here on earth but living in hell mentally like so enslaved and like overthinking and anxiety and all those things so hell doesn't only have to be like some crazy other place that we've never experienced now it may get worse but it's really a matter of, you know, moving with love, moving with peace, and just having that space mentally and spiritually so you could just be walking in that direction. So it seems as if this man right here was moving with unforgiveness. Now, that's something that a lot of people may do. I'm not bashing him for it. He said it himself. But that right there was one thing that was enslaving him. That right there was one thing that was keeping hate within his heart. So he was never able to really release that. So, um... Pretty interesting experience. Like I said, we all have the right to believe whatever we want to believe. You could take it as truth, you could take it as lie, or you could just take it with an open mind and accept it for what he experienced himself. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you do like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on post notifications. That's very, very, very important so you can catch when I post another video just for you guys. I'm going to catch you in the next one the same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace.